we have been discussing about the secondary keywords for azap report these are actually applied in conjunction with the primary keywords as we recollect primary keywords address the design intents of the process and secondary keywords address the potential deviations from those design intent so you can understand that secondary keywords get combined with the primary keywords to explain the possible deviations in the design intent therefore deviations on the design intent is exactly the root analysis of an azop study what are the list of secondary keywords how can we combine them with the primary keywords can we combine all possible secondary keywords with all probable primary keywords what are the successful combination what are meaningless combinations to answer that let us see at least some examples of secondary keywords first look at this table i have selected certain secondary keywords and i am trying to associate certain meaning of the secondary keyword when combined with the primary keyword remember secondary keyword should address the deviations for example if a deviation is considered to be no i try to add this or combine this with a primary keyword as flow then if you read it like this flow stroke no what does it mean it means the design intent in the process is flow should occur the deviation is no flow is occurring that is basically an azada situation on the other hand when no flow occurs the operational aspect of the process is not achieved i can also say isolate no you want to isolate a specific sector of a pipeline in a process flow diagram you are not able to isolate that it means if the process flow of a specific sector is not isolated what would be the consequence so i am looking for the possible deviations from the design intent look as this keyword less i want a specific value in my process to stay at a threshold level maybe for example pressure so pressure becomes a primary keyword i combine the secondary keyword less to pressure now i read it like this pressure stroke less it means the design intent is i need to have certain pressure in the process if that pressure is lesser than that value what happens to my consequence so deviation is less pressure on the process look at for example more i am looking for a temperature as my primary keyword i need to maintain certain temperature for my process if this temperature is quantitatively increased because of some erroneous occurrence in the flow then if i say if the temperature is more than a threshold value there will be a deviation so the word more uses secondary keyword on the primary keyword temperature makes a meaning for my process look at this keyword which is reverse for example i want the flow to occur on a specific direction from a to b for example in a process if the flow is reverse because of pressure variation because of mal operational error of any specific valve then what would be the deviation from the design intent i do not want the flow to get reversed at all if at all the flow reverses then there will be a deviation in my process so reverse can also be used as a secondary keyword with the primary keyword as flow now remember these secondary keywords or combine with certain primary keywords to give them some meaning so it is your judicious combination of selected secondary keywords to combine with only selected primary keywords ultimately to make the whole combination meaningful so by this way nevertheless one can make a statement that all secondary keywords may not be possible to combine with all primary keywords i'll give some examples in the successive slides before that let us also see some more secondary keywords example for example let us say also 
the design intent is completely fulfilled, but in addition some other related activity also occurs. For example, flow also the design intent is to have a sufficient flow. In addition this combination indicates contamination in a specific product stream. Another example can be level also. So, this means material in the tank or the vessel which should not be there. So, there is a material also present whose level is showing an higher threshold value which is not desirable. So, this also can also tell me the deviation on the design intent. There can be a secondary keyboard like other also. The activity occurs, but the way in which it occurs is not intended. For example, flow other could indicate a leak or a product flowing where it should not flow. For example, I want the liquid A to flow through pipe segment, but liquid A is not flowing through pipe segment, some other liquid B is flowing. So, flow other can be a deviation. You can also have a keyword like fluctuation. The design intent is achieved only part of the time, because there is a fluctuation. The fluctuation can be in pressure, the fluctuation can be in flow. This fluctuation can be resulting because of an airlock in the pipe. So, this combination would tell me there is a fluctuation in flow, there is a fluctuation in pressure for example, then that can be resulted from an airlock. So, airlock can be a cause for this deviation. I think you are slowly getting the point how to identify the secondary keyword, the primary keyword and the cause. On the other hand, how to identify the design intent, the deviation and the cause for the deviation. You can also have a secondary keyword by name early, usually used when studying sequential operations. For example, I have a style of operation to be followed. The operation has to state or slowly follow a specific order, but this keyword can tell me alarmingly some operation would have occurred early then it must have started. So, the operation has started in a wrong time or the operation has occurred in a wrong sequence. So, this early combined with either a flow or pressure etcetera can tell me the deviation from the specific design intent. So, now ladies and gentlemen in an ASOP study you are able to identify the design intents in a process, you are able to identify or list the deviations possible from the design intents. You should also know that all combinations of these keywords are not appropriately meaningful. For example, temperature no, pressure reverse could be considered as a meaningless combination, because there is nothing like no temperature. There can be a low temperature, there can be high temperature there can be no pressure, there can be high pressure, there is no reverse of pressure, there can be reverse of flow. So, you cannot combine all possible secondary keywords with all possible primary keywords, because sometimes such combination could give you meaningless statements as well. So, be careful when you draft an ASOP report, how to combine the secondary possible words with primary words. Ultimately, this should tell me a deviation on the design intent, which should ultimately give me some meaning. In this case, these statements or combination do not give me any meaning at all. Now, the question comes how an ASAP report is generally prepared. You have a standard format of an ASAP report. The results of ASAP study are recorded in a desired format. This is what we term as an ASAP report. The format looks like this. In a given process industry, try to identify all possible deviations for a specific design intent. You may wonder why I am not using a column here design intent, I am using deviation. Basically, I will write here flow no. So, that combination will tell me what is the design intent and what is the deviation, because one is mainly worried about the deviation on the design intent. So, instead of separating the design intent and deviation, I am putting them together and calling them as a deviation in the process plant. 
then I have to fill here what could be the cause for such kind of deviation. I will list all those causes in this column. If that cause occurs or the deviation results in a process, what could be the consequence or what all the consequences can take place when the deviation is realized. Can I have or do we have any existing safeguards which can control, limit, mitigate completely these consequences? If it is not there, what kind of action should I recommend? So, ladies and gentlemen, Hazap report is a comprehensive document in a tabular form, which has these five columns, which explicitly state their own meaning in a written report. And now, can you guess my primary and secondary keywords will be located in which column of this report? Your guess is right, the primary and secondary keywords will be located in the deviation column of this report. Now, let us take up another example just to make you to understand how we can explicitly write these five columns for this specific example. Look at this example carefully. This example has a P and I diagram which I give you here, the process and flow diagram. There is a dosing tank T1. The dosing tank T1 receives a chemical in as an inlet. The level of the dosing tank should also control because if it overflows, it may be a problem. I can have a level indicator here or I can have a pressure release indicator here because if the pressure inside the tank exceeds the threshold value, I should be able to release that pressure here. So, I have a tank T 1 which contains a dosing chemical. This dosing chemical has to pass through this line and reach V 1. I have got two tanks T 1 and V 1. V 1 not only receives chemical dose from T 1, some more chemical like T 1 is also further added to V 1 through a mixture here. Now, the chemical from T 1 flows through V 1 not on gravity, but I pump this liquid to V 1, because I need a specific pressure to be maintained. I pump this liquid to V 1 or this dosing liquid to V 1 through this line. While doing so, this dosing tank may have certain impurities, which I do not want to be participating in the reaction in the tank V 1. Therefore, I use what they call as a stainer S 1. So, the function of the stainer S 1 is to filter certain chemicals, certain impurities, which are not desired to take place as a reaction in the tank V 1. So, I have a pressure gauge P 1, which can also control and indicate the pressure in this line. And this can be one of the safeguards of a pressure release, if the pressure in the line exceeds a specific desired value. Now, the mechanical components present in this process and flow diagram can be listed as follows. One, a stainer, stainer is not a simply filter, then it can be an electronic filter, can be a mechanical filter. The pump P 1, the pressure gauge for the pump P 1, the mixture and of course, the tank V 1 and the tank T 1 and of course, the inlet control valve, the pressure release valve etcetera of tank T 1 you can have a similar arrangement in tank V 1 as well. And then from this segment, the process is further flowing. I am taking only one segment of this process to understand how can I record the deviation, the design intent, then the causes, the consequences and the action. So, I will explain them one by one slowly. So, this is an example problem given. Before I try to explain you this problem, can you attempt to write down the list of design intents in this problem, the possible deviations from the design intent in this problem, the possible causes which could result in such deviations. If at all any such deviation occur, what are all the consequences of the deviation? Do you see any safeguard measure in this problem? If at all no safeguard measures are seen, what actions you want to recommend for this PFD process. 
Let us take, take one specific example. I am filling up the first column of this report. I am picking up the keyword flow no. Ladies and gentlemen, you can easily recapitulate that this is one of a very interesting combination which we saw in the previous slide. The design intent is I need the chemical to flow through the line not in the reverse direction from T 1 to V 1. Suppose, if there is no flow occurring in this line, there is a deviation because V 1 needs chemical from tank T 1 to do a process. It also needs further chemical from mixture from some other tank T 2. I am not talking about a segment on this discussion at all. I am considering only one segment of T 1 receiving supplying chemical to the process at V 1. So, the keyword what I am addressing here is flow no. What could be the cause if there is no flow? The potential cause that would result in the deviation could be the stainer S 1 can get blocked. How this can happen? The blockage in stainer S 1 can occur when there are lot of impurities present in the tank T 1, because dosing tank T 1 receives chemical from the direct line. There can be lot of impurities in this tank T 1. If that is allowed to flow through this line, the stainer may get choked or blocked due to this impurities present in the tank T 1. Therefore, there is no flow taking place beyond this point. So, the deviation is no flow. What could be the consequence if the flow does not occur? If the flow does not occur, the dose from tank T 1 to the tank V 1 is not properly mixed. Whereas, for the process to be successful, V 1 needs certain dose from tank T 1 which remains incomplete. So, that is the consequence. So, ladies and gentlemen, we saw what is the design intended deviation of this process which is a flow stroke no. We also saw what could be the cause for this. For example, one such cause could be the strainer S 1 can be choked because of impurities as a result of which the consequence is there is no flow. The consequence will be tank V 1 may not receive sufficient quantity from the tank T 1. The additional causes may also be pump P 1 may result in cavitation. The pump P 1 actually has to pump the liquid or the dosing chemical from the tank T 1 to the tank V 1. When there is no flow occurring because of the strainer S 1 being choked or blocked, then there will be what we call as cavitation in the segment of the pipeline where the pump P 1 is installed. Now, this can be an additional cause which also has resulted from the same deviation flow stroke no. The consequence of this additional cause could be the whole line or the pump may get completely damaged if this is prolonged. To record the consequence, I suggest the following hints. When you record any consequence, be explicit in recording them. Do not assume that the reader at any later date will be fully aware of the significance of the statement. For example, look at the statement, no dosing chemical to the mixture. That can be a consequence, but you should explain very clearly what could be the consequence if no dosing chemical to the mixture occur. You must say that the volume V 1 or the tank V 1 needs certain chemical quantity from T 1. If no such chemical dosing is supplied, what could be the consequence? So, try to record the consequence in detail, be explicit, do not assume that the reader is understanding the whole process in detail as you have understood and therefore, add better detailed explanation in the consequence column. Do not try to be very brief. Hazap report is an extensive elaborate report, why because this report is going to serve as a backbone if you want to address risk mitigation in the later part of the plant process. We can also suggest some more tips 
on consequences. When assessing the consequences, do not take any credit for the existing protective system or any such instruments that are already included in the design. What do you understand with this statement? For example, if you already have a safeguard system already present in the process and flow diagram, which you explicitly see from a process and instrumentation diagram, do not try to take a credit of those systems and do not ignore the consequences, because you may wonder that already protected systems are in position, why this consequence will occur. Can you have an example of this specific statement? Here is an example. Let us say an expert team like you identified a cause in an example problem as flow no, which has occurred due to a spurious closure of an actuated wall. Let us say there is a wall which controls the flow from the tank T 1 to the tank V 1. Flow no is the deviation I am looking for this specific problem. That deviation is perceived because of a spurious closure, erroneous closure of a specific wall. You may wonder that the wall position indication is displayed in the central control room. Ladies and gentlemen, in a complicated process industry like petroleum industry, all wall positions are generally indicated for their functional value, whether it the valve is closed, open etcetera, either by a light indicator in the control room. For example, there is a wall V 1, the light is green, it means the wall V 1 is open. The wall V 2, the light is red in the control room, it means the wall V 2 is closed. So, for each and every critical valve location, generally the central control room in a process industry like petroleum industry has an indication. So, that is one of the control measure which is already included in the design, but if you think that the wall position is indicated in the central control room. Therefore, there is no chance of spurious closure of this wall need to be mentioned in the consequence, then you are wrong. Why? Because there is also an existing alarm in the control panel, which indicates the spurious closure of the wall. You may wonder, there is a double check. One, the wall position is shown in the control room. Two, if at all there is a spurious closure of the wall, there is an alarm, which is also going to indicate to me in the control panel. So, taking granted that these two are already existing measures present in the design, do not try to ignore this spurious closure possibility in your consequence column at all. So, what do I mean is, one may think that about the additional thinking of such additional control measures can be safeguards against identified causes, do not ignore them. Because thinking them as additional control, you may ignore, but spurious closure of the wall could result in increase in pressure in the upstream line. See, the control panel will only show that the valve is spuriously closed. The control panel will give an alarm if this valve is spuriously closed, fine. But the spurious closure of the wall will result in increase in pressure in a segment of a pipeline, which is not seen neither in the control panel nor through an alarm. And you also ignored it, because you possibly thought the spurious closure of the wall is a default indication in the control panel. Therefore, I am not going to mention the consequence of this at all. The consequence what we could mention is, if the spurious closure of the wall is executed, then the pressure in the line gets increased beyond the threshold value. And that increase in pressure can result in fire accident. Okay? Therefore, any such spurious closure of the walls etcetera. For example, even though you have additional control measures indicated in the control panel, do not ignore them in your consequence recording. Therefore, do not credit for protective systems that already included in the design. These protective systems can only indicate for example, the closure of the wall 
it does not indicate anything about the increase in the pressure of the segment of a pipe because of the spurious closure of the wall. Is that clear? Let us come to the next column of recording in an Azab report, which I call as safeguards. Ladies and gentlemen, Azab report has basically 5 columns to be filled up. You can recollect parallelly as I keep on telling you. The first column talks about the deviation on the design intent. The second column talks about the causes which could result in such deviations. The third column talks about the consequences if such deviations occur in the process. The fourth column is going to talk about the safeguards. What do you understand by safeguards? If you notice any existing protective device in your PNID either to prevent the cause or safeguard the adverse consequence, record this in the safeguard column. You indicate, you mention anything about the existing safeguards available in the existing process and instrumentation diagram or in the process plan in this column. Remember that safeguards need not be only restricted to hardware. For example, if you have a fire sprinkler, if you have a smoke detector, if you have a temperature sensor, which are all hardware components of the system, do not think only such kind of things be mentioned in the safeguard system. You can also include points like regular plant inspection in the safeguard. This can also become one of the important aspect of risk assessment and evaluation. If the plant contains or has a policy of regular plant inspection, kindly include that also in safeguard systems. Be sure that such inspection should be actually carried out. That is very important, because if you install a device, for sure the device will work. But if you make a plan to do a regular inspection, if you do not do a regular inspection, then the whole advantage of executing this safeguard will be lost. So, if you say that regular plant inspection is scheduled as a safeguard, then you be ensured that such inspections generally should be carried out. The last column ladies and gentlemen in the ASOP study is what we call as action column. If a credible cause results in a negative consequence, it may be decided whether some action should be taken or not. For example, you have noticed a deviation from a design intent. You have also identified the cause, the root cause for such deviation and you also ascertain that the root cause is giving a very serious negative consequence. Now, in this column decide whether you must take any action against such consequence or not. So, you got to specifically mention in this column what action is recommended either to mitigate that consequence or to limit the risk resulting from such consequence. If it is felt that protective measures are adequate, then no action need to be taken. Mention that in your column. For example, if you already have enough protective measures, which you feel they are adequate enough to take care of such consequences, if they occur in a process industry due to any perceived deviation on the design intent then mention that no action need to be taken. You can also recollect the cold plated process system which I discussed previously. So, if you feel any such adequate measures are available, kindly mention that in the action column accordingly. I can give you more tips for writing this action column. Action column generally falls in two groups, action that removes the cause action that mitigates or eliminates the consequence. Remember, there can be action which can address the cause directly, there can be action which can address the consequence directly. So, action can fall in two groups. Out of these two, kindly address those actions, give importance to those actions which generally attempt to remove the cause instead of addressing those actions which can mitigate or eliminate or reduce the consequences, 
because consequence is occurrence of any accident, cause is the root reason for that occurrence. So, let us try to address actions related to the cause and not related to the consequence in general. First type is preferred, but not always possible when dealing with equipment malfunction, because equipment malfunction can occur if you do not do a periodic inspection and maintenance of the equipment. Therefore, you will not be able to avoid the cause for such any failure, but you can always reduce the consequences of such failure. First type is preferred in general, but it may not be possible in all the situation. Let us look at the same example again quickly. I hope you can recollect this example. I have a dosing tank T 1 we should supply a specific chemical at a specific concentration and volume to the vessel V 1 to initiate the process further. The vessel V 1 also receives a similar chemical from tank T 2, which is not a part of this dialogue at all. I have a stainer S 1 through which the line passes to reach V 1. I want to maintain a specific pressure at V 1, therefore, I pump this dose from chemical dosing chemical from tank T 1. We have already seen the design intent and deviation and causes and consequences of this specific example. I am looking only for the actions that are good for the problem. The actions can be the following. Please ensure that impurities do not enter the tank T 1, because if the impurities enter the tank T 1, the stainer get choked and that becomes a problem. Therefore, fit the stainer in the tank itself. That can be an action you can suggest for this problem. Consider carefully whether stainer is required in the suction to the pump, because if the stainer is choked, this segment of the pump receives a negative pressure or suction pressure and that will cause what we call knocking of the pump and the pump may get damaged if this is prolonged. Think seriously, do you really require a stainer in this segment? or can I replace the stainer somewhere in the inlet of the tank itself. Examine whether is it necessary that no such matters should enter V 1. For example, if by V 1 has a contaminated chemical, which is because of the impurities present in the dosing tank T 1, remove the stainer for example, and check whether this chemical in V 1 should really not have those impurities. For example, if you permit those impurities to be present in V 1 as well, kindly remove the stainer S 1 from this location as well as from this location. So, that can be also an action in this whole exercise. If you say that the chemical in V 1 should not contain any impurities that are likely to come in T 1, then fit what we call as a duplex stainer. It means, put a stainer here as well as here, as well as somewhere here, so that the stainer completely purifies the chemical entering in V 1. But to insist that in the action column, that these stainers should be periodically and regularly clean for its maintenance and also have a standby unit of this line, because if the stainer is choked, you should be able to pass this liquid to V 1 by an alternate line, because if there is no T 1 flow into V 1, the whole process is affected. So, action column is now thoroughly understood, I hope. Hazap report has five columns basically, deviations from design intent, the causes, the consequences, the existing safeguards and the recommended actions. I now list certain important points if you are going to write the actions column on an ASAP report, do not automatically opt for an engineered solution. Adding additional instruments, adding more alarm systems, adding more trip off switches are not an effective method of recommending actions. Give due regards to the reliability of such devices. How reliable are these devices? Think about them before you suggest any such action for rectifying the deviation in your design intent. In addition, such recommendations may also result in increased operational cost. So, your report should justify 
any such recommended actions. If it is inevitable, kindly recommend them. If you can have an alternate engineering solution, do not only rely on hardware components for safeguard or actions. For example, you can add certain actions like periodic inspection, periodic maintenance. They can also be an action column, which increases the cost of course marginally, but not to this extent, but the effect of this action could be far superior in comparison to adding the segments in a given existing line. So, you can also consider the level of training and experience to be given to those personnel who will operate this plant that can also improve the deviations in the design intent and can minimize the consequences. Remember that sophisticated protective systems are dangerous if operators do not know how to use them, because their maintenance can also be equally complicated. So, just by recommending certain additional instruments, do not think your action column is completely fulfilled. If you recommend sophisticated protective systems, they can also be equally dangerous and their maintenance can also be equally complicated. Ladies and gentlemen, let us try to narrate the same thing with an illustrated example here. Let us say I have a tank, which we call as tank T 1. The tank T 1 receives a chemical from some inlet source. This chemical has to be supplied to the tank V 1. The tank V 1 also receives supply from another two tanks T 2 and T 3. Let us now not consider the supply source from T 2 and T 3 under this discussion. We will now consider that let us say tank V 1 is receiving supply only from tank T 1. Tank T 1 has some control measures. If the pressure inside this tank exceeds a specific value, then there is a pressure release valve which will safeguard this tank. So, the tank which receives supply from an external source may have some impurities present. To avoid this impurities to be supplied to this tank, I am putting a strainer S 1 which is nothing but the pass filter. Now, I want to maintain a specific pressure in the supply line. I have a pump P 1, the pump initiates or causes pressure in the supply line and then there is a mixture from T 2 and now the content and the specific pressure and temperature reaches tank V 1. Now, I want to do a basic Hazap analysis for this facility. Let us see how does it happen. Let us say tank T 1 receives a supply flows through the pipe and tank V 1 is getting filled up. Now, there is a possibility that there may be impurities in the line and due to that impurities, the stainer gets choked and there is no flow beyond the stainer line. Therefore, the liquid content present in V 1 is completely coming to the minimum requirement. Let us see this once again. I have a supply from tank T 1, the line goes through the pipe, fills volume or tank V 1. There is a possibility because of impurities getting choked in stainer S 1, the supply to V 1 stops here and there is no supply beyond the line S 1 and that results in reduction of volume in the tank V 1 and this is hazardous to my process. Now, what are all the keywords I can employ to write an Azab study for this example? Can you guess? What we can do is, we can first consider one primary keyword which I call as flow and the secondary keyword could be either less or no. The second keyword primary could be pressure because pump is operating and the secondary keyword to pressure could be low or high. So, two examples are there in this keywords. One is the primary keyword what I call as flow associated by secondary keyword no, less, more. The second set could be pressure associated with secondary keyword high, low, etcetera. So, by this way one will be able to easily generate the Hazap report. 
let us see how a flow chart can help us to write or prepare an ASAP report. So, there is a flow chart here. Let us try to explain in simple terms how an ASAP report can work on this. Select a section of the plant, try to identify all relevant keywords primary for this section being considered. If you are not identifying all the primary keywords, then select those primary keywords which has not been previously considered in the section of this plant. For example, pressure, let us say. Then further, consider all possible secondary keywords, check whether have you considered all of them. If you have not considered all of them, then try to select relevant secondary keywords which has not been considered previously in the existing analysis or ASAP report. Once I now identify all possible primary and secondary keywords in the system, then let us find or every cause for this deviation not previously discussed and recorded. If every cause for this deviation is not recorded, then record the new cause. Then check whether these are associated of any significance because of this consequence. If these consequences are associated with any specific significance, then record those consequences as well. Then check whether your plant has any existing safeguards. If the plant has existing safeguards identify, then regard to those consequences and safeguards is action necessary has been carried out. If you are given enough regard to those safeguards present in the action, then record the agreed action. Otherwise, if you have not regarded for the safeguards present, then consider them now and repeat the chart again. Once we have done this completely for a specific section of the plan get back to the next section of the plan and start doing the process again. So, this is a very simple illustration in terms of sort of a thumb rule, how to start an ASOP section of the plant, then how to identify and where to identify the primary and secondary keywords, then identify the deviations, identify the cause, identify the consequences record the consequences, check for the existing safeguards, check for whether these safeguards have been regarded properly in your report, then record the agreed action. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that HSC or offshore industry always allow what we call as an accepted level of risk. That is why we emphasize that record the action what you agree upon. It is not completely required to mitigate the whole risk involved in the plant. You have got to reduce the risk to a level what we call as level of minimum acceptance. Once you do that for a specific section, then repeat the same exercise for all other remaining sections of the plant. That is how you complete ASAP for the whole study of the plant. In the next lecture, we will discuss about some more details on ASAP report and we are expected to discuss few case studies on ASAP report and that is how we will be completing very shortly this module on HSE. Thank you very much.